what I want to talk about now is our billet alternators. Uh, this is going to pertain to just our billet alternators. Anything with the billet case, uh, the, like the 8206 style or your GM trucks, uh, your large case GM uh, type applications that have the ground lug on the rear case. Uh, the reason this doesn't affect the um, standard case alternators is because the case is conductive on that one. And what I'm going to show you on the little voltmeter here um, I always test the resting bolts here. So let's see, we got. Alrighty. Um, nice little 12.9, resting at 12.9. Um, this is a dual battery setup. Um, not really, nothing special. Just, it is resting a little bit high, but uh, usually they're around 12.4, 12.5, but. Uh, I've been driving this thing, so maybe it's still trickling down. So we have the have the 12 volts we know we have. So now what we want to do is let's see if I can do this with the camera working right. Go around here. One more time. Okay. Uh, we'll get our positive. Okay, let's do it that way. So, now watch, when I take this negative probe here, I'm gonna to touch it to the alternator, because usually that's what you do, you just ground it on the case. I am touching all of the anodizing case. I'm even touching it right on the one of the bolts that holds it together. You can see there's no, there's no reading at all. There's no continuity there. But if I touch it to the Allen head bolt on the rear case of the alternator, there we go. There's my 12.9. There's my resting voltage. Um, truck's not running, by the way, so just you know for voice. Um, so in there, you have your uh, you have your continuity. Now watch again. Got my positive. Now, if I touch the ground to the flutes where the anodizing has been removed from the alternator, bam, there's my volts again. Um, we put that ground lug on there because you, it, you don't, you need to use it. Otherwise, what happens is, watch this. You've got your positive. Now, watch what happens when I touch the shaft of the rotor inside this pulley here. Oh yeah, it grounds there. Well, what it does is it grounds through the rotor and then it grounds and deadheads at the back of the alternator in the bearing. A bearing is pretty terrible for a ground. Even though it shows good, it's gonna make the alternator work a little bit harder. Um, you don't wanna ground through an alter or through a bearing that has grease and rotating parts in it. Uh, you want a big, dumb, solid piece of metal. Um, or a battery, which is what we say in the directions. The ground wire needs to come from the alternator uh, ground boss all the way back to the negative terminal on the battery. Uh, you can ground it to the chassis. Yep, it'll work. Uh, but to work in a best case scenario situation, it's gotta go to the battery. Um, same thing with the positive on the alternator. Positive comes from there, it goes right over here. So um, one other thing, watch this. You can get your positive. Watch when I touch the alternator bolt. Yep, nothing. Now if you touch the mount, there you go, there's some. That anodizing is the whole reason for that ground boss. Now if you had the regular cased one, uh, you just you could ground it to the alternator bolt here. Uh, it's no big deal because it'll conduct all of that and it'll connect because if you're touching the anodized, I'm touching the anodized foot right here, nothing. But when I move it over to the mount, boom, you see it shoot up. So just remember that guys, um, we put that ground boss there for a reason. Use it, use the same gauge power wire uh, as you do the ground and vice versa. Both of them go directly to the battery. Will it work grounding it or putting the positive somewhere else? Sure will, 
but it won't work as good. And if you're buying this type of alternator, you want every bit of performance out of it. Um, it's what we're in the business to do, give you maximum performance, performance for what you're paying for. And it kind of looks pretty good too. So, all right guys, just quick, I'm out on that. It's Tony at McMahon. Uh, Tony at McMahon.com if you need anything, social media, all that good stuff. I'm easy to find, easy to get in contact with. So uh, on to the next one.